Hello everybody, Sanir, Engineer, MBA and Investor and in today's video I want to talk about CRISPR Therapeutics, what's going on with the company, where are we today in 2021, September, what is going on with CTX001 which is their leading ex vivo CRISPR edit program. I want to talk about all of that. Before we do that guys, please do like this video, smash that like button, destroy that like button. YouTube algorithm, we all know how it works. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit that notification bell if you haven't, guys. Our videos get to you faster. So thank you so much for support, guys. We are literally almost at 1,000 subscribers. So thank you so much for the support. So let's keep that momentum. So I was reading this article on Motley Fool here, and it's basically titled as Could CRISPR Therapeutic Stop Help You Retire as a Millionaire? And I actually, I think there was something similar to that, like a t similar title that we covered like a few months ago. Uh, I'm not even sure if it was from Monthly Fool. Maybe, maybe it was from Monthly Fool, actually. I, I hope they didn't just copy-paste the article, right? Uh, but this was published like just a few days ago. And basically, they talk about CRISPR therapeutics, they talk about the CRISPR technology and how it's, it is evolving. So CRISPR th therapeutics are sort of in the first branch of first-gen technology when it comes to CRISPR. You know, we're looking at CRISPR therapeutics, Antilia, Editas, and then you have the second generation where you have base editing, and that is, for example, bean therapeutics, you have Verve. Um, it, I, I'm not sure where I would put Graphite Bio. I guess you would put them in second generation as well because, you know, they're reducing off targets, improving efficiency based on the first tech gen technology. And then you have obviously Kairu Biosciences with Chardonnay's technology. Now, the third generation is Prime Medicine, way too early, no public company yet. Prime Medicine, which is owned by 5 million shares by Bean Therapeutics. Uh, they're still a private company as we speak, so we won't go over that company or that third generation technology. But what is very important for me to mention is that the competition is fierce, though I still believe that may, there will be many, many winners in this space. Genomics is a huge space. There will be many, many winners because the total addressable market is so big. Just these companies addressing sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia, which CRISPR Therapeutics with CTX001 are doing exactly that, are not enough just to cover the U.S. alone. So, lo so many winners, so many, um, so many companies needed to enter in this space, and I truly believe this will be exactly the case. Right, it, that thesis will play out. Now, the reason why I'm making this video is as I was reading this article. Where is CRISPR Therapeutics today? Like, we've seen Antilia go shoot 50, 60% in just of, over a week because of their Antilia 2001 phase one data for the first time on human uh, clinical trial. And we saw Beam Therapeutics shoot up. We saw even Editas have this comeback um, with their stable leadership as they go forward. We also saw the IPO of Caribou Biosciences, and they've gone way up since then, just a few weeks ago. And we've also seen some positive traction with Graphite Bio and Verve Therapeutics, although Graphite Bio has been hit a little bit since uh, a few weeks ago. But where is CRISPR Therapeutics? I think that's a big question. I think me as an investor, I'm starting to wonder, you know, what is going on with not just this company, but the leadership, right? And the reason why I'm asking these questions is because you as an investor, you should always be asking these questions, right? I know you build conviction. I know you put a lot of time and, 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 and research behind these companies, but ultimately you should always doubt and you should always ask questions, right? Ultimately, there are humans behind companies and humans have flaws, just like everybody should be expecting humans to be. No one is perfect. And I think me as an investor, I'm looking at CRISPR Therapeutics and I'm like, well, you know, what about, you know, base editing? You know, they didn't announce anything. We know NT NTLA did it, right? And Antilia did it. Uh, they announced, you know, I think it was back in May, I believe, they announced base editing approach, which obviously we saw David R. Liu and Beam Therapeutics get angry about that. But that's another topic for another day. So what is actually going on with CRISPR Therapeutics, right? The company sort of been trading sideways if you check the past six months you know let's go year to date obviously they haven't recovered their early peaks this year just like most genomics genome editing companies so nothing special here but the company has been trading sideways you know 
The CEO, Dr. Sam, I'm a big fan of. I believe he's be, he will be one of the revolutionary CEOs of this decade. I haven't heard any interviews. I mean, his last interview, I think it was on the Blackstone podcast episode, of BlackRock, Black, Blackstone podcast episode, where he sort of talked about big data, artificial intelligence, how it is because of the pandemic, we're, we're reducing delays, reducing costs, having more virtual meetings. I just don't see anything going on with Dr. Sam right now, the CEO of this company. I don't see anything happening. Me, I'm looking at this and I'm like, guys, there's so many opportunities here for you to innovate. You know, there's so many opportunities for CRISPR Therapeutics to announce, you know, some sort of base editing approach, some sort of additional partnership. You know, you see Moderna, what they're doing. They're looking for a partnership in CRISPR. Yet, you know, CTX001 or CRISPR Therapeutics obviously are not anywhere near this topic, you know, we, we are throwing names like Caribou Biosciences, Beam Therapeutics, uh, even Graphit Bio, you know, but nothing is being said about CRISPR Therapeutics. So I'm looking at this and guys, do, just don't forget CRISPR Therapeutics was the first company we covered in this channel and we went really dive, we dived really deep into this company. If you watch our first few videos, even first dozen videos, You'll see me going over the company website, the programs, their technology, why we believe CRISPR is, you know, even the first gen it has a lot of, a lot of potential. The upside is so big. Yet, as an investor, I want to see leaderships execute. I want to see them going forward. I want to see them sort of adopting in this, these evolving times. Their partnership, their revision partnership with Vertex was amazing. I loved it, right? Even if they gave up a little bit of equity in that program, I still love how they basically got up from $900 million and $200 million additional if it is FDA approved. But since then, we haven't heard anything, right? And I'm looking at this and, you know, the ex vivo approach has, you know, use cases. I think that I don't necessarily think in vivo is better than ex vivo in all cases. I think ex vivo has a definite, definite uh, use case and obviously the fact they hired Philippe Douai earlier this year means that they're sort of you know positioning themselves to go commercial in the upcoming years hopefully by 2022 the only thing I'll say like I said you know what's going on with CTX version one we haven't heard anything the company hasn't really given any update the past two months really not just about CTX version one or just in general right the company hasn't got given updates, right, about any of their programs. Like for CTI-001, the study date started in 2018, right? And it's expected to complete by May 2022. So we're looking at over about, about four years, right? And data has been positive. Everything's on track. So then what is it, right? Why there's no really press releases? You know, they posted their Q2 earnings. I wasn't really too impressed. Nothing revolutionary said. Data is positive. Are they really just laser focused with CTI-001 that... They just want to get that FDA approved and then everything will fall in place. Or is there something else going on? I'm not sure. You know, I'm not trying to spread any type of FUD. I'm not trying to spread any type of negativity. You guys know I'm all about information. I'm all about doing our due diligence. And I am invested in this company. So full disclosure, right? I am invested in this company. So I'm not trying to bash them down or I'm not trying to find negatives that, you know, I'm not trying to create any uh, narrative or whatnot. But ultimately, like I said, as an investor, you should always be questioning, you should always be doubting because that's the way to do it. Um, you know, genomics you know, is a great space, but it's very risky, you know, especially the biotech space. We've all seen what happened with Theranos and there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of stain from that experience in, for many investors. And you definitely do not want to see that in today's genomics companies, genome editing companies. So, I just want to make sure everything is good. I mean, if you guys have any information, any interviews that I didn't cover or I missed out on, let me know. I'm really curious to see. I haven't really seen ARK Invest really dive in with this company anytime soon. I know they bought some uh, CRISPR therapeutics in the ARK G Fund just under two weeks ago. I, I saw that. That was a great, great look for it. But besides that, no articles, no interviews. I'm just really, I, I feel like me as an investor with this space growing so much, we see what's going on with Ginkgo Bioworks and obviously they're not in the CRISPR technology, but because, you know, there's so much going on in this space, I think there's an expectation set that one of these pioneer companies such as CRISPR Therapeutics um, 
would be the front leaders as to, you know, adopting any new technology, building new partnerships, having these interviews, talking to investors, talking to analysts and sort of having these Q&As and so on. But maybe I'm just thinking, um, I'm just thinking differently here and I'm re looking forward for your opinion. Let me know guys in the comments section below. Let me know what you think, what's going on with the company. If you think everything's on track, maybe there's just laser focus and that requires so much energy and focus. Or maybe something else is going on, you know, let me know. Really curious to see what you guys think. Plus this video, I just wanted to bring up CRISPR Therapeutics a little bit. I haven't really had a chance to talk about this company in the past few weeks. So hopefully you guys have some input here. Like this video if you liked it. Smash that like button, guys. Destroy it. Subscribe if you haven't. Please do subscribe. It really helps this channel. And I'll let you go and have a beautiful Thursday. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you.